Thank you for, uh, for everybody who's joining us this morning. I uh, really appreciate you uh, jumping on board. We'll get started here in a few minutes. We're just going to wait for, um, uh, for other folks to join the webinar. Uh, but welcome to Blaze Connect. And uh, I think uh, James Sheen, who uh, kind of produces this for us here at Blaze, is uh, going to start putting some quick questions up uh, for us here. Just something to interact with and let us know what you think. Good morning, everyone who's just joining. Uh, thanks for being with us here at Blaze Connect. Uh, we're going to get started in a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for others to jump into the webinar, and we'll get started soon. Um, okay. All right, we're just going to wait another minute here and then we're going to get started. So uh, uh, just let's wait just a second here. We'll get going soon. Um, and uh, happy, happy Thursday to everybody, especially in California. I'm sure you're happy to have this air clear, clearing up here. So I'm in the Bay Area personally. So finally can see the sky and the sun as of yesterday. I know LA is uh, clearing up as well too. Didn't get hit as hard uh, in most areas, but uh, I know that you guys are breathing easy. Also want to just welcome folks from Michigan and uh, Massachusetts uh, and looks like uh, Nevada as well too, or you know Las Vegas uh, specifically. So really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thanks for dialing in. And uh, why don't we go ahead and kind of get started here today. So. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. This is Blaze Connect. Um, it's really where operators talk shop, um, and we uh, at Blaze uh, produce this with a, a common uh, partner, in this case, C Technologies. Um, so uh, let's just dive right in. Um, it, uh, Matt, uh, I want to introduce Matt Ketone. Uh, Matt is the founder and CEO of C Technologies. Um, and I think a great place, Matt, to start is let's just tell the audience um, a bit about the seed uh, product, uh, what you guys offer and, and uh, you know, how that works. Got it. Thanks for having me. Um, so seed is a retail technology platform. Um, it's specifically designed for in-store. Uh, we help dispensary operators connect their customers to products they'll love and, uh, and certainly buy. We were yeah, I'm sure. If you want, I can start to kind of roll through these if you. Yeah, let's just just talk about your product, and we'll kind of dial it through here for so, you. Yeah. So we, a bit of a unique way that we approach things. It's it's very person. It's a very personalized consumer journey, um, and one of the ways that we're doing that is through the uh, product consultation. Um, so we're asking uh, consumers essentially what are their goals in um, consuming cannabis, uh, mm -hmm. creativity you know, both medicinal or recreational purposes. Um, you know, what are their preferred consumption methods? Um, general frequency of use. And, and of course, based on that conversational correspondence and interaction, uh, it will result in a recommendation. Um, so getting this information and data from the OS and image management system, in this case, obviously Blaze, uh, so that we can help narrow uh, the consumer journey and help the consumer understand specifically what I might most well suit them for uh, safe access and successful consumption. Cool. That's, uh, that's great, Matt. I know there's a lot of customers and consumers that, you know, uh, continuously are evaluating new products that they're interested in or, um, you know, uh, others who need to kind of uh, shop in a different um 
you know, for their family members and, and for friends and, uh, you know, really jump into different categories. And so for just from a discovery standpoint, for a new customer or someone looking to kind of expand right. uh, their consumption, uh, it's a great solution, uh, definitely. So um, let, go ahead, what were you say? Yeah, the way we look at things is in, in a couple of different ways. We kind of, um, you know, uh, bifurcate the market in, in, in two, two different ways. One is recreational, um, medicinal, but of course we look at it from a kind of an emerging market or from a more mature market, emerging markets being east of the Mississippi um, and mature markets more so west of the Mississippi. And so we've, we've really created a platform that addresses uh, those various consumers. So um, yes, if uh, you're a little new, uh, to cannabis and not really sure where to begin, where to start, you're a little overwhelmed and intimidated. We want to empower you, um, mm -hmm. learn a little bit more about the products and the plant and what are the various effects and, and help you, again, um, go home with, a, uh, with safe access and successful consumption. Um, and then in the mature markets, we'll talk about this a little later, I'm sure, as it relates to self-service, but how do we address the consumer that's more of an avid, they know what they want, uh, they'd like to get into this dispensary and maybe um, be on their way. Um, yeah. So we're trying to just empower uh, the consumers so that they can have a great customer experience at, in this case, the artistry and uh, tell their friends and family and continue to come back. Yeah, sure. Well, look, good segue. Um, you know, uh, I want to introduce Lauren Fontaine from the artistry. She's uh, uh, the founder of, of uh, the artistry and, uh, you know, highly engaged with the business, uh, a great operator, um, a very unique location. I highly recommend if you haven't been there, uh, you should check it out. Um, and, I, and I think in a highly competitive market of Hollywood, uh, the artistry has done an impressive job from my perspective, uh, just very early on gaining traction uh, because of this consumer experience uh, that they provide. And Lauren, uh, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about the artistry, and then we can dive into a few questions. Sure. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm one of the founders of the artistry. We are a retail cannabis business with locations throughout California. And our goal in creating this concept was to highlight the natural synergy between cannabis and art. Cannabis has long been an inspiration for artists, and we all know that cannabis can heighten your perception of the arts, music, and theater. And so we really wanted to bring this to the forefront and celebrate the connection between the two in our retail stores. Our goal was to create a really communal and creative customer experience showcasing art from local artists. We have a cultivation room with plants and of course a big selection of cannabis products. We wanted our stores to be really unique and eye-catching but also approachable. We wanted all types of customers to feel welcome and to have an authentic shopping experience. And so a huge part of that experience for cannabis consumers is education. We've been in this space for a long time so from the medical dispensary days to now, we know that customers are really accustomed to getting recommendations from their bud tenders, to asking a lot of questions about genetics, terpenes, forms of consumption, um, and wanting to explore the new products because there's always some new strain coming in. Mm -hmm. And customer education typically flows from our bud tenders, but we wanted to have another resource in our stores so customers could feel free to explore on their own and maybe gain some comfort with the product and cannabis before they were interacting with our staff. Um, and so, you know, a big part of our customer experience within our stores is our technology partners. We're currently using Blaze for our POS and we're using Seed for our in-store devices. And in addition to education, we also knew we wanted to provide in-store ordering for our customers. So if they did want that convenience of self-service checkout, they could have that in our store. So our goal is to have these technology platforms supporting us and kind of running seamlessly in the background. And that way we can really focus on the in-person customer interactions. Great. That's great, Lauren. Um, and just a reminder, I, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the call for everyone uh, who's joined us and participating on the webinar, 
feel free to ask any questions. Um, James will, uh, again, here at Blaze, will take all those questions and then immediately just uh, text them to me and we'll ask them in real time and, and make sure you get the uh, responses that you need. But uh, back to you, Lauren, uh, that's, that's amazing. You know, I, and I, again, uh, really recommend anyone to visit this shop. Um, there are, uh, there's really, a, there's so many SKUs that the, the product uh, a suite that is available to any consumer type uh, is really there. And then the experience itself, uh, you know, lends to uh, making uh, your stay a little bit longer because you've got great art to look at. Uh, besides just the products um, and product knowledge is really a big key. So you touched on that, Lauren, right? So your bud tenders are well versed and understand uh, the different products, but with 800 SKUs um, and things coming in and out all the time, um, I think this is where a product like seed becomes useful. So just, just tell us a little bit about when you, when you were putting the tech stack together, um, you know, what were you looking to solve for with seed and, and tell us more about how that, uh, helped your consumer experience that you're trying to create at the artistry? Sure. So cannabis consumers are very curious and they ask a lot of questions. There's a lot of novice consumers, but then there's the regulars who come in and they still want to see all the new strains that came in. Um, they want all the details about them. So that's great. We encourage that curiosity, but it can take a lot of time for our staff to field all those questions. We're happy to do so, but we wanted, you know, another resource for that, that could kind of yeah. help streamline the process, especially maybe for people that weren't comfortable with asking the questions to the bud tenders because they were so new to it. Um, and so we wanted this system where people could go through and like Matt was saying, they could do a consultation if they wanted, or they can just look at the menu see all the different options, see the prices. Um, so we were trying to solve that issue of providing so much information to the customers. And then the other thing is to, for the self-service checkout, you know, there's times when it's busy in the store. And so there's waits and people can get frustrated about that, especially right. if they know exactly what they want and want to get in and out. And so we wanted to have the in-store self-service ordering so we could really help those customers out to have a very quick and easy experience. Let me, let me ask you a question on that. I'm just curious operationally with the, when you place a self-service order, is somebody picking it up at a, a separate window designated um, to do pickups or is that you just go to an individual bud tender and they'll be able to find your order inside of the a Blaze platform? So they would go directly to our checkout area and we have a few cashiers there um, and they could, you know, um, let the people know that they placed the order on the kiosk and it's similar to if they had placed a pickup order online and that way they're kind of at the front of the queue. Um, they can just give their first name and then as soon as the customer placed the order in the C kiosk, it gets transmitted through Blaze to our fulfillment. So our fulfillment is working on it right away. So, you know, the customer then will walk to the cashier and they might have to wait a couple minutes. They can look at the artwork, um, but it's pretty quick and easy. The customer can just go up there and pick up the order. Got it. And then something else I, uh, uh, I didn't think about this previously when we were prepping for this, but I'm just really curious about tourism, you know? Um, so, do you happen to see, or do you have any data on like, you know, when, when you see tourists coming through, do they end up spending more time if they're, you know, not local to California, are they spending more time with the kiosks and engaging more with that product or do you know? So it's a little hard to tell now because of COVID, you know, tourism isn't what it was and we are in a really tourist centric area. So we do, you know, we were seeing a lot of out of town visitors before. Um, there's some now. Um, the way we have them positioned in the store, they're very prominent. So people do interact with them a lot, even if they're not doing an order, you know, they might just want to, like, they see this thing learn here, or some of them say order here, and they can yeah. just you know, peek through them. And so I think that newer customers, so that might be a lot of the tourists too, rather sure them because they can just get some insight into the products and what's going on in the store in general. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, Keith. Roger, if I can add to that, I have to just yeah. give the appropriate credit to Lauren and, and the artistry team. I think what they have created, kind of in line with what you mentioned as far as tourism, is a destination dispensary. Um, the way we look at it, you know, they have created a tremendous consumer experience and it's a destination. So whether it is uh, something you visit and, um, and you got there by getting on a plane or if you're in Southern California or Northern California and you find yourself in their neck of the woods, it's absolutely something you, you, you need to check out because they've, they've done an unbelievable job. It's a destination dis uh, dispensary. No doubt. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm super impressed with the store. And I think, you know, part of it is that uh, there's lots of locations that, you know, do great business. Um, uh, and, and are just turning customers through. But, you know, if you have an opportunity and you've got the capabilities to create an experience uh, in your store like this, uh, whether it's art or, you know, something else that, you know, is a good theme uh, for the location, it definitely changes the game. So um, it's not necessarily uh, easy all the time to kind of pull this off, but if you can, the engagement, the experience, the return visits, um, you know, in cases where you have products like seed available, um, you know, we definitely have partners that see, uh, it, you know, uh, engagement levels go up, um, you know, they, there's so much data available on what someone's browsing, uh, entering into the seed technology that it can really help uh, with the sale and the upsell, right? So, um, you know, trying to get the average ticket prices up, um, obviously is important. Um, and, you know, I think that's something that we've just seen across the board uh, when you have uh, product uh, recommendation engines and uh, are figuring out ways to streamline the experience from a, uh, uh, from a transaction standpoint for the customer, uh, the end consumer, and then also, of course, for your staff uh, operationally. Um, let me just pull something up here. Yeah, so, uh, so Lauren, a uh, question for you. Um, uh, you added those uh, touch screens recently. Um, you know, how's that uh, changed uh, consumer and customer behavior? Um, I know that's a newer product that you just uh, recently uh, put up on the walls. Yeah, so we added these really nice, large, wall-mounted touch screens, um, and they have all of the seed content. But what I, for those which are in the showroom amongst all of the products, they are really useful for people viewing the menu. Um, so they can place their order, but just being able to see all the products and the pricing, it's a really nice, super user-friendly interface. Um, so, I mean, it just looks great as a way to browse all the products. Yeah. Um, if they want to place an order, um, Seed also has built in like a recommendation thing. So it's great. It's, you know, kind of like, if you like this, you might be interested in these products. Um, right. It just based, it's not like a sponsored thing that we're doing for the brands. It, it really is authentic to like what products are kind of along the same vein or someone might, you know, if it's CBD, what are different forms of CBD products. Um, sure. Screens have been really good for, inter for increasing the customer engagement with the seed devices. Awesome. Um, uh, we have a question. Lauren, I think this is best for you potentially from Tanner. Uh, Tanner, thanks for the question. Um, the question is, down the line, once laws can be figured out, do you think a smoking lounge will be allowed inside a destination dispensary like this one here? Uh, a caveat, uh, Tanner, is that us, uh, the artistry is already moving down this path of, uh, you know, attaining uh, lounge licenses. So I think Lauren could definitely uh, give you some type of response here. Yeah, I love that you asked this question. Um, so we're in West Hollywood. West Hollywood's the only city right now Southern California that's allowing consumption lounges. So we actually do have two licenses for consumption lounges that we'll be building out within West Hollywood. Um, one will be as part of our retail store in the building, and then we'll be building out a separate one as well. So those will have a space where there'll be smoking consumption, edible consumption, and then like a restaurant aspect to it, live music. Um, so that's totally going to open up the world of what this customer experiences and mm -hmm. people can do at our location. Love it. Awesome. Um, got, a, got a question from Josh as well too. Josh, uh, um, Josh asked, you know, just with COVID, he asked a COVID question, but I just want to broaden it a little bit, which is just, um, 
you know, in your uh, pre and post COVID world that you're seeing at the artistry, just tell us more about some of the changes you've gone through. And then Josh's question specifically was that because of COVID, are you having to wipe down these machines and maybe tell us a little bit about your SOP with some of the in-store uh, 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 kind of kiosks like that? Sure. So we are very serious about hygiene and COVID and doing everything we can to protect the customers and our staff. So we do regularly wipe down the seed devices. Um, we have our staff on full alert to just be monitoring when people are using them. We're constantly wiping down the countertops in the display room. We've actually changed our policy to where we don't allow the customers to touch the products directly. So we have the bed tenders assist them with that. Um, and, you know, hand sign sanitizer everywhere. Um, but we're, we're taking the COVID precautions really seriously. So it's still easy and safe for someone to use the touch screen devices, um, you know, even if they're apprehensive because we are wiping them down between each customer. Yeah, Raj, if I can add to that a little bit, I think, yeah. you know, there's a combination of things, um, you know, with COVID being a new and unique challenge, uh, retail in general, and us obviously being a technology provider within that space, we learned a lot from uh, Lauren and her team as it related to kind of um, how they were nimble and responded, yeah. you know, um, and so they, you know, they were able to show us how they were more successfully cueing people, you know, to the device. Um, and, and also showing that it had been properly sanitized. Um, mm -hmm. Artistry did a great job of, um, and, and oddly enough, you know, people are um, seeming to be more comfortable with, you know, human to device um, interaction today, right now, at least I would say. And, and obviously I'll go back to human to human, but um, yeah, but the artistry team, you know, honestly, they kind of helped us understand um, a great way to respond as it related to COVID. And then we were able to share that across the balance of our dispensary clients. And uh, as long as it's sanitized and such. It's, uh, yeah, no, that's great. I mean, you know, this is uh, a still like, you know, cannabis and, and this community of, of operators and, and vendors like us, Matt, as well, too. This is a very uh, tight culture still, right? So we're all you know, uh, we're all helping each other, right? Uh, and, and, you know, as the tide rises, all boats rise with it. So it really is important that we kind of share a lot of this information with each other. And just, you know, um, we're definitely, uh, a lot of the SOPs for COVID have been put in place now, but I did see a lot of great opportunities and, uh, and there were a lot of operators engaging with each other and helping each other to kind of get to like, what's next here with this, you know, crazy situation going on. We're getting a lot of questions, which is great. Keep them coming in. Um, Lauren, these are mostly for you and Matt. I'll come back to you in a minute on the, on the ordering side. I want to talk to you about something there, but um, Mike, I got your question. I'm going to just modify a little bit. And, um, but, uh, but, you know, when you, uh, this is for you, Lauren, uh, um, when you were selecting uh, Blaze and C, um, you know, what was it uh, that helped you? Well, what did you see that would help you accomplish your goals? Um, you may have touched on this earlier, but just for, uh, like if you can kind of reiterate a bit about uh, what was that selection process for you like? And why did uh, these two companies, um, you know, beat out the competition? I mean, that, that's really what Mike is asking. Sure. So we did look at a lot of other options um, for both platforms. So um, we've been in this space for a long time. We've used a few other cannabis POS systems. I'm not going to call them out specifically, um, but we did have issues with them um, just with reliability, with um, inventory matching, processing transactions uh, going down. Um, and so there's, we, we, a lot before we finally settled on Blaze. Um, and Blaze just had capabilities for delivery that are great. Um, just all of the things with our staff, with processing the transactions, with analytics. Um, it's worked really smoothly and also their customer service team has been like, ready and available to help us with anything. Um, so we've been very happy with that. Just having a basis for comparison using other before that. Um, and with Seed 2, we did look at some other options for having the in-store ordering. Um, and really, Seed's interface is just much better than the alternatives that we explored. Um, so they have 
not just the menu ordering capability, they have all of the educational content, the consultations, they can customize everything for you. So for us, for instance, they put all of our artwork information on the console. So you could actually browse all the pieces, see the artist names, see the prices on them if you're interested in purchasing. Um, so that was really cool about Seed was just the platform was so comprehensive that it allowed us to provide a lot of things to the customers that the other ones that we looked at were just primarily focused on in-store ordering. Mm. No, great. I really appreciate the, the comments there. And yeah, I think, you know, um, the, the, there's a lot of great things that we, we offer within the technology of Blaze, but I would say, and this is one of the reasons why before even joining Blaze, um, I was seeing it as a customer service piece, like people getting back to you, responding and following up. Like, I think that's something that is generally lacks in our space oftentimes. So I appreciate you kind of bringing that comment up. Um, you did talk about artwork and Sebastian has this question that's very specific. Um, probably not going to get the dollar numbers out there for you, Sebastian, right now. But um, some of the questions were, uh, did the artist donate the work? Um, you know, is the artwork for sale to customers? I think it sounds like it is. Um, and um, is there, this is separate from, separate from artist questions, but is there any direct R ROI or analytics that you can share about C in the shop? The artwork question, we are functioning essentially like an art gallery. So all the artwork is for sale by the artists. We don't take any commission. Um, our whole goal was to support local artists and to raise awareness of them, you know, ones that maybe aren't as well known. Um, so we have the art on display and we rotate it out every couple months and it is all available for sale. And we have sold a, a decent a number of pieces from our last exhibit, we sold a lot of them. Um, and so that's kind of fun for the customers because if they want to, that's um, great. They, can buy, they can take the work home with them. Um, so yeah, we have that. And we're also always accepting submissions. If there's any artists out there, um, you know, you can also submit your work to us and then we will continue showing in the space. Um, so on the seed kind of data ROI, um, so we are seeing, um, the purchases that are made through the kiosks, it is a higher average than like the normal transaction. Um, and it's probably because it's people that know what they want and the people that are ordering aren't like the new customers maybe are just buying like one product and coming in. Um, so they're usually ones that are brand loyal and they're buying certain things that they've tried before in the past. Um, and so it's helped in that way and then um, it's just helping us to, you know, process more transactions on a daily basis because it takes a little of the burden off of the um, staff there. And so people aren't, you know, turned off by maybe a wait in the store or um, being able to like quickly get their orders in before we're closing. Um, so that has been really helpful. And then Lauren, real quick, are, 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 uh, is someone able to pay within the seed uh, app? in kiosks or are they paying the cashier when they get to the fulfillment or that that cashier window they're, yeah they there it doesn't take payment the kiosks don't right now um but so they go to the cashier and we take debit card and cash so they would uh, go, and when they get their order then they pay at that time okay and then uh steve i uh, i think we kind of answered your question let me know if we didn't with some of the comments lauren just made uh, I, I don't know if, uh, Lauren, if you're open to talking about a percentage of customers you think that use the kiosk versus not, uh, that was one of Steve's questions. Not sure if you know or if you want to share, but uh, it's an item out there. Um, yeah, definitely. I would say maybe like 10% of the customers use them. Um, and so, I mean, we are seeing a large number of customers coming through the door every day, um, but a lot of them kind of just play around with it like maybe if there's a wait or they're just there's a lot of people who take their time in the showroom we have this grow room to look at and so people yeah. kind of like to browse before they're even ready to shop shop um yeah so i think that's what we're seeing of the people that are interacting with them great this is a question oh sorry matt what are you gonna say 
Yeah, I just add to that, I mean, to kind of um, further support some of the statements that Lauren made, we usually see an average of about 10 to 20% of the number of customers that come into dispensary using the device. But to, to Lauren's point, um, you know, it's a combination of things, right? So the self-service order component, um, yeah. drive sales, look, we'll talk about that I think in, in a minute or two, but also um, giving your, your customers the opportunity to browse at their own pace um, and while they may not place an order on the device, but again, how to, you know, giving them comfort and confidence so that when they do speak with more in staff, it's, it's more effective, it's more efficient, um, is, is a big part of it. So yeah, just that browsing component, um, can be so helpful, whether that's on the retail, you know, store floor or in a waiting room or et cetera. Um, yeah, it's huge. A lot to know, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, look, this is a, this is a world of automation and convenience at this point. And, you know, between Uber and Postmates and everything else, we're uh, so used to self-serving ourselves because we get to control the experience as a customer and consumer. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I'm a big fan of these products in general, and I do love the concept of putting them in the waiting room for sure, because uh, in some cases, someone's there, you know, even if it's just three minutes, you can do a lot in three minutes on a kiosk that's intelligent and start looking at products and seeing what's available and prices and all that stuff. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I have a, I have a question that's probably- One point, Roger, I just wanted to just follow up on that because at the artistry, we don't have a waiting room. It's an open concept. And so people use the C devices, but in our other store, the Green Easy, um, it's yeah. more of a traditional layout where there's a separate lobby and the showroom and we have a seed device in that lobby and so that one sees probably more closer to like the 20 percent customer engagement because people are stationed there they're waiting they could look at the menu there yeah. i know states and locations people some people have that lobby waiting room model some people now have the open model so that's another thing to consider how that could like impact the customer experience you no know, definitely but thanks for sharing that stat so yeah, if you have a waiting room, it sounds like you're going to get a lot more activity uh, because people are waiting. It's, you know, pretty, pretty standard. Um, uh, this is a question, uh, I think, Matt, you might be able to answer as anonymous attendee. And then I think Park is Sebastian again asking, uh, but it's really related to um, um, just the seed and blaze integration, right? Um, and in terms of you know, if you are on Blaze, what's that onboarding experience like, Matt, uh, if they sign up with Seed? Uh, and then I'll just quickly add that, yes, the integration is seamless. So when you look at uh, the, the Seed kiosk and you're looking at different products and you're seeing recommendations or you're placing an order, all of that is uh, hitting Blaze, right? And pulling all the inventory up and out to display in the UI to uh, the customers and consumers. Yeah. Uh, and then Matt, I'll let you jump into kind of what does onboarding look like exactly when you're using both the systems? Sure. Yeah, it, you know, one of the things that's important to remember as an operator is one, you know, and Lauren talked about it earlier, you know, when you're creating a technology stack, um, you know, some of that front side homework you need to be doing is making sure that um, certainly there's an integration between the various systems. Um, and, and that maybe also that there's some examples out there in the market of where this is happening successfully. Um, you know, to really unleash more value out of your tech, every component of that tech stack needs to be communicating um, uh, in an automated way. You know, whether that's a pull and a push, with Blaze, um, you know, what's been so great working with them is that we have a two-way integration. So yes, we're pulling product data in an automated way to populate the menus um, on you know the kiosks and the tablets, um, and um, and and it's real time. And then obviously upon submission of order that will populate in the Blaze system in the same way that um, Lauren and the artistry team are typically used to seeing orders be submitted. Um, so when you operationalize at the store level, it's very easy to fulfill and um, it makes it makes it you know easy for, for them to run the operation uh, without a whole lot of change uh, or, or adjustment. Um, but yeah, having that integration is a key component. Um, and, uh, you know, if for any operators that are on the, on this right now, I mean, technology should communicate in an automated way. Um, and, and so make sure that, that that's the case. 
and then that your you know the, the prospective technology companies you're looking to partner with can can show you examples um and, and how yes. that works. In and so everyone on the webinar, um, you know, we're currently just kind of showing you a little bit more about the self-service ordering as we're talking about it. Uh, Matt, I, I think uh, we're just going to let these kind of dial through a little bit um, so every, as the operators can kind of see what happens. But it's a very clean, uh, you know, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing UI at seed. So you can kind of see what's happening during the self-service ordering process. Um, and the reason I'm just going to let those kind of play out a little bit, Matt, um, is because we're getting a lot of other questions. I just want to really want to make sure we get sure we get back to these operators on things. Um, so uh, uh, so, yeah, James, just um, let's just show the ordering process and everyone attending, please uh, take a look at the uh, the order set up and you can kind of see um, how it works. And, you know, everything kind of destinates in blaze um, as a as a live order, no different than if your butt tender had taken it. Um, the, uh, this is a great question from, uh, Aquisha. I hope I pronounced it right. Aquisha, um, for states that do not, uh, allow recreational map, um, what is happening to ensure that person placing the order, uh, has the, uh, appropriate, uh, license, medical license. And I mean, maybe that's happening on the front end when you check in at Blaze, or in, you know, at the at the location in, in the Blaze platform. But uh, just how does that uh, kind of show up within Seed, or do you even uh, factor that in, or is it done within the point of sale uh, first? The latter there. So yeah. So the check-in process again, dependent upon um, what market or state we're talking about, and specifically from a compliance or regulatory perspective, regulatory perspective. Um, how that has to happen. So yeah, typically check-in will happen, um, um, but being done within the store and then uh, within the store at the POS system. And then the way that we essentially connect to an individual and how that kind of operates is dependent upon how the store does it on a case-by-case -case basis. So sometimes it's phone number, sometimes it's last name, et cetera. So that's kind of how we connect. Those yeah. But then at that point, certainly we know that this is an individual who was checked in, um, whether it be for um, medical or recreational, and we have a sense of who that individual is or is not. Got it. Awesome. And yeah, so I think uh, Aquisha, the you know, on the Blaze side, we definitely provide uh, you know limits and licensing um, uh, compliance uh, for different states. So depending on what state you're in and that check-in process, you should be able to. Um, uh, to kind of make sure that that customer uh, legally can shop in your store. Uh, and then from there, uh, seed is really operationally taking care of uh, recommendations, uh, you know, product reviews and searching as well as the ordering process. So uh, we'll take care of compliance for you uh, from that perspective. Um, Steve, uh, on your next question, I'm just going to kind of hold off on that. Maybe we should uh, catch up or you should catch up with Matt and then talk a little bit about uh, more of the uh, workflow and, and content images, how everything kind of speaks to each other, but it's very seamless. Um, it's pretty straightforward and it, uh, it will kind of just uh, map right over to C uh, and then uh, devil's in the details, right? So let's just talk about that a bit later if you want. Um, Lauren, there's a question here. Um, um, uh, just like, what do you think Lauren in terms of like, educating customers on categories that they might not be aware of uh, and familiar with. Um, and, and, you know, like a lot of things out there, um, you don't know, like we never, I never really knew I needed an iPhone, but I couldn't live without it. Right. And someone had to kind of put it in my face and, and put it out there. So just from a, from an operator standpoint, you're trying to educate customers and trying to get them to understand, uh, you know, a different product lines in cannabis. What, what do you think helps uh, make them more aware and, and get that product line selling in the shop? Sure. So there's so many different products now. Um, like you said, we have over 800 SKUs right now. There's all different things coming out all the time, you know, that a lot of people have never heard of. Like they don't know that there's patches and sublinguals and Sri rock yeah. oil and all these things. Um, so in Seed, it's cool because there is that consultation process and it does, depending on, you know, what you're looking for, why you want to use cannabis, 
it will suggest and then give you information about the different product categories. So like topicals, tinctures, <coughs> things that people, you know, maybe aren't as familiar with, even concentrates and the different kinds of concentrates and what they are. Um, so it's useful yeah. for, that, for sure. Um, and then, you know, in the store, we have the, the bud tenders just sharing information because uh, people don't, yeah, like I said, they just don't know what's out there and it's always changing. And so yeah. just having yeah. the um, awareness of like, oh, have you ever tried this type of product? And then the other thing in seed that's great is it talks about the effects and, you know, like for edibles, how, the onset times and yeah. how you them and there's a lot of educational content there about the way right. different products function nanotechnology now so everything exactly <laughs> um so chris had a question about deliveries and so chris your your question about is this available for deliveries this is seeds a in-store kiosk solution um and you know if you have a delivery business your e-commerce website uh, or whatever you're using as a menu for your customers, that's what's going to carry a lot of the information. Now, um, I haven't seen, just making sure, I haven't seen anybody doing a like amazing job of any type of uh, recommendation engine. Uh, I haven't seen one at all, actually, in the e-commerce space. Uh, and maybe uh, someone's come up with it, and I just haven't noticed in the past quarter or something. But um, so haven't seen a ton there. Uh, but Matt, is there anything that you're working on that is specific to delivery, or are you an in-store kiosk solution uh, only? Our primary focus and area of expertise has always been inside the store. And certainly, we've had our shoulder tap um, for other use cases, much like uh, delivery. So yeah, we've actually had conversation with a handful of delivery entities that are looking to, again, just the consumer in that whole journey. Um, yeah. and being really that you know, this, this device is um, in the cloud. Um, you know, there's also been kind of some talk about remote, um, whether it be like remote activation um, situations like community outreach programs, maybe festivals and events that would kind of help and facilitate. And then obviously an order being originated at that event and then being fulfilled through delivery, maybe from a, a local dispensary or um, a, uh, a distribution center. But we haven't really attacked that, um, but there's some conversation around it. Um, so again, you know, our hope is to just help consumers with safe access and successful consumption. But really our focus is inside the store today. Got it, awesome. Got a couple more questions and I, we're kind of running long, but you know, I, it's fine by me. I just want to make sure we get uh, everyone's questions answered, which are great questions today. So I really appreciate it. Um, there's an anonymous question about uh, uh, just inventory when it's sold uh, from the kiosk, how quickly is it taken off the sales floor? Um, and what, um, uh, and, and about the integration between Seed and Blaze. So yes, it's a, our integration is very seamless. It's very easy to kind of get set up and it, it takes, you know, it's pretty quick. Um, so that part I can handle. And then, um, you know, Blaze specifically, once you place an order, even if it's not uh, paid for yet, that product is put into a hold in your inventory. So if uh, someone else is looking for the same exact product um, uh, in live inventory, they're gonna see uh, one less unit because you'll have inventory in hold until that final transaction and then that product has been sold. So we do carry a whole status in Blaze, which will make sure that that inventory has been removed and you're not uh, overselling uh, inventory that you don't have. Um, there's a question from Albert, which is, uh, this is a good question. Um, uh, in seed, Matt, um, or is there a way to promote deals and promos and BOGOs? And is that, uh, is that set up on your side? Uh, are you pulling our promo data out of Blaze and posting it? Or how's that working today? Yeah, absolutely. Again, something that we need to be looking at very specifically on a state by state basis so that we're, you know, operating appropriately from a compliance and regulatory perspective, because some states don't allow it. But the, the sophistication the seed platform allows for all of that um, okay. is to you know create sales lift increase that basket size and sometimes trying to help operators move slow moving um you know liquidate slow moving inventory so yes how do we create a bundle how do we you know um you know we have some some customers of ours who um you know one of their their, their kind of the themes that their uh dispensary is that they've created this flight 
with pre-rolls, and they really want to make sure that um, this flight of pre-rolls leaves with every customer. So we essentially a bundle. So yeah, there's a lot of things we can do to kind of help with those sales initiatives, those sales goals for the operator. Got it. Awesome. Um, cool. That's the uh, 20 questions we had today, which is great. Um, uh, Matt, I just wanted to, to really thank you for, for joining today and uh, you too, Lauren, of course, uh, but I just wanted to do one last thing, which is, you know, I, uh, I have my eyes across a few different things in the space. I'm about an inch deep and a mile wide and lots of stuff. And then obviously point of sale, I've got that covered, but from a, from an innovation standpoint, I just wanted to ask you, like, where do you think things are going for uh, stores in terms of this, uh, the kiosk technology that's in store and, and kind of just give us your perspective on the, the that sector specifically. I think, I think everybody, everybody needs to be cognizant of the fact that this is a consumer driven market, no matter what aspect of cannabis you operate in, it's driven by consumers. And so, you know, um, you know, whether you're in a dispensary, um, and really trying to drive that one-on-one -on -one consultation, uh, consumers are looking to, um, you know, be, be involved in a personalized journey and it really does help with the personalization of that process. A lot of people, whether it's outside of the store or inside the store, they want to purchase products, learn about products digitally. I think it's important for operators to give consumers that opportunity in the store. Um, yeah. That's the direction it's going in. And, and, and certainly for the operators, again, looking at it at a much more macro perspective, um, Lauren could probably tell a lot more about this, but it's not easy to be profitable in this space, and certainly for the operators. And so you, you need to lean on technology, be nimble, ways to drive profitability leaning on the technology and really giving the consumer what they're looking for so i think more, yeah. and more personalization that's awesome and i agree with you right like that's again back to my comment about uber and postmates and the world we live in right it's convenience automation and personalization this is what's happening across the board for consumer journeys and experiences whether you're a brand like the artistry or an in-store consumer brand like that or if you're in any form of marketing like all marketers are looking to do this because that's uh, that's the world we live in uh hollis really good question you just asked um you know i just want to be uh, clear that that, that blake all the data that we have um, uh, in our platform from customers is uh, is our customers data uh, blaze does not, does not own that data uh, we don't lease that data uh, we're not sharing that data of any type and Matt that question is for you as well too is that does seed um, uh, have its own uh, this is a little different I apologize Hollis, the question is, um, does Seed have its own database for product information? How often is it updated? Um, uh, and the question also is, how big is the team that keep that information updated? Um, where did you get the information from? Um, so lots of questions there and, and you know, answer as you, you see fit. Yeah, so kind of a two-part response to that. So as it relates to the education content, um, you know, Lauren had spoken about this earlier. Um, that's been uh, curated in-house. Right? So we, we created an in-house research team quite a while back, obviously. Um, you know, research cannabis is something that's still uh, very immature. Um, so we had to do the uh, research ourselves in-house. We actually uh, had that validated by scientists and doctors outside of the organization. Um, so we update that and curate that on our own. But as far as it goes with product uh, information and, and visual assets, descriptions, et cetera, uh, typically, that's being pulled from whatever CRS or import that we're integrating. Um, you know, we do solve for various problems in the event that's not been um, uh, comprehensive. Um, so we just write code so that, you know, visual assets are populated accordingly or description. This is still a very fragmented space. So we do all that work. We take it off of the shoulders of the operator. I don't have to worry about that stuff. But, um, yeah, we handle all of that. But for the most part, products inventory comes from the POS and inventory management systems. Got it. Okay, awesome. Um, the, uh, uh, the the anonymous attendee, you had another question. I'm just wondering if you could uh, email us at, uh, at sales at blaze.me. I'll get back to you personally. And, uh, you know, we're coming up on third, 50 minutes here, sorry, uh, for our um, Blaze Connect webinar, which is a little bit over. And uh, it's been exciting, though, and I appreciate us having this opportunity to answer questions for operators and 
thank you to everybody that joined us today. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. And I also, of course, want to thank uh, Matt Catone from C Technologies. Thank you for the partnership. We really love the technology. It is uh, amazing. And uh, I really appreciate, Lauren, your business, as well as the opportunity to talk to you uh, and share the story about the artistry, what you're doing operationally, but also uh, the exciting experience that you've created. So lots of great, exciting news coming up the rest of this year and next year uh, for your company. And so I look forward to hearing more about the rollout of the different lounges and locations throughout the state. Um, thank you once again, everyone, and uh, a special thanks to James Sheen, our producer, who's the guy behind the guy running the operations of these webinars for us. Uh, with that, uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Uh, have a great uh, weekend as well, and we're here for you. If you need anything, please reach out to us at Blaze or C Technologies if you're looking for the in-store kiosks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.